what's up everyone uh, today we're gonna be doing some EEPROM work on this Toyota ECM now there's a gentleman on Facebook he works at another Toyota dealership said he had a used car and this used car they lost all the keys in now this was an older Toyota and if you're not aware if you lose keys on an older Toyota like 98 99 2000 2001 that that generation uh, you can't do an immobilizer reset or an all keys loss function. You need to replace the ECM. All of the key data is stored on an eight leg chip. It's called an EEPROM chip on this ECM now. So instead of replacing this ECM, we are going to remove that eight leg chip. We are going to uh, basically reset it so that it, is, that it is in automatic registration mode as if it was a new ECM now. Not sure if this will work. Uh, he said that they already replaced this ECM three times from another company uh, who reset it. It still, for whatever reason, was not accepting keys. Uh, so this ECM, as far as I'm aware, is supposed to already be reset, but we're gonna go in and look at that EEPROM data. We're gonna see if there's key data stored on it. If there is, we're gonna erase it and versionize this computer, send it back to him and see if it works. These, these older ECMs are a lot nicer to take apart. That last video I had with that Tundra, getting that ECM apart, now that ECM is outside of the vehicle. Getting that ECM apart with all the glue and sealant holding it together uh, took me a solid half hour, 45 minutes with a hot air gun trying to melt all of that sealant that they use, make it looser so I can get it apart. These ECMs just have four screws, cover comes off, and you have easy access to the circuit board. Just like that. Now, like I said, this ECM, I believe, was already uh, messed with by a, another company. You can see that there is a screw missing right here. Uh, it's just, just something to be aware of. Take this screw out and we'll have the circuit board off of this vehicle, out of this box, just like that. Now in order to do this, I'm going to be using my IM608. There's definitely tools that are far cheaper if you're just doing this, but I have the IM608 and it has the, uh, has the XP400 Pro which should be able to read this EEPROM chip pretty easily. So I'm gonna be using that, it's what I have, uh, but there are cheaper options if you want to do EEPROM work only. I have this because it does far more than just EEPROM work, but uh, we're gonna be using this to reset that chip, read that chip and reset that chip. So the chip we are going to be looking for is gonna be an IC900 chip. Let me turn down this light, it's a little, a little hard to see. So IC900 is going to be right here. IC900. Let me see if I can spin this. Now one thing to keep in mind when you are removing these chips is you need to know what pin number one is. Now pin number one is going to be uh, where that dot is so that's going to be in my top left corner uh, so we need to keep that in mind anytime we are hooking up in an EEPROM reader or soldering this on and off the board I'm going to first try to read this on this uh, on this circuit board but if I'm going to be honest most likely it won't work Now remember this uh, this pin one is in the top left corner. Just like that, it's off. 
All right, so now, now that we have this EEPROM chip uh, unsoldered from the circuit board, I have it mounted with this adapter onto the XP400 Pro. Now, this does a pretty nice job holding this EEPROM chip in, and I've had good luck reading this. Now, I haven't had good luck reading on, uh, these chips in, on the circuit board, uh, but I am kind of new at this, so, you know, bear with me. Uh, so I have it mounted in here. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, yeah. And I'm now going to go into our programmer function and try to read this chip. So go into programmer. Uh, say yes, I, I um, am not doing anything illegal except those terms and conditions. We will go to our chip EEPROM. Chip read and write. our EEPROM function. Now just through experience I know that this here is a microchip EEPROM and it's a 93C. So 93C56 is our EEPROM chip. Click on our EEPROM and we are going to read this. Alright, so this here is our EEPROM file. I'm going to save this. Uh, yeah, 93C56 EEPROM original is what I will save it as. Just in case anything malfunctions, anything happens, I have this file uh, saved. Now, I already have a dump file uh, that that will virginize all of this information and make the ECM think that it's new, but uh, I'm going to go back and just show this screen. So you can go to edit hex in your settings and you can open that file. And this here's the file. This here's your EEPROM file, right? Now, within this EEPROM file, you're going to have your master key information, your valet key information, and it's all hidden within this uh, hex file. Now, uh, you can go in here and manually uh, change all these settings if you know what you're looking for. But I have a dump file. I'm not going to do that. I already have a file that is from an original ECM. And I'm just going to upload that dump file right back onto this chip so that I don't have to go through the painstaking process of manually clicking on CF12 and adjusting it to its original state. Now, uh, there's information out on the internet on how to do this, on how to adjust all this. Uh, but I'm taking the easy way. So, going back to my programmer function and I'm going to write this file and I am going to write this uh, virgin bin file that I have now like I said this came from a brand new ECM um, I was able to grab this file and I now have it saved so that I can uh, upload these on any ECM well any ECM that will accept this file uh, when needed so it's now going through the writing process. It says chip written successfully. Hit OK and we should be good to go. Um, so now I just have to solder this back onto the board. So before I put this chip back on, uh, I'm going to clean up these clean up these pads. I was given a tip last time to use some low melt solder anytime I want to clean up pads. So I bought some, some low melt solder. We're going to put some low melt solder on these pads and that should help it, uh, help clean this up a little easier so that my wire wick, the copper wick, isn't sticking. So let's turn this on, turn my soldering iron on. Get some uh, flux. Get some flux down.
Now that we have some low melt solder mixed onto those pads, we should just be able to take this wick and uh, wick that back up, clean the, uh, clean the pads down pretty easily. And that did make a huge difference cleaning these pads right up. Now, we don't want low melt solder on these pads, obviously. So we're going to take some regular solder. We're going to spread that on the pads. All that's left now is to put this uh, EEPROM chip back on. Remember, pin number one goes in the top left. All right, so I think I have all the legs secure, but I'm gonna go back over with my iron. Nope. Bridge these two, which isn't a problem. Just want to clean up your, your tip, your soldering iron tip, and that will uh, that will remove that solder from the bridge. So before I clean all this uh, flux up, I just want to just grab these legs, make sure they're nice and secure. What's left now is to reassemble this, ship it back to uh, Reggie, and hopefully he can get a video of it working. If he does, uh, I'll post this video. If it doesn't work, well, you probably won't see this. I also unfortunately do not have a screw to put back into the circuit board. So I'll let him know. Uh, hopefully 
he can take one out of the other ECMs that he had that they bought and maybe he can uh, he can just install this screw make sure it's in there nice and secure although there are four screws on the outside holding it in as well but sometimes a lot of screws are also used to ground the circuit board so you can't just leave screws out all the time all right all done so hope you've seen how you can easily virginize these ECMs, especially people who do a lot of Toyotas. That's kind of kind of the easy EEPROM work you can do. Some of the easier stuff you can do. You definitely go down some rabbit holes learning this stuff, so hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time. Good afternoon guys. Want to share a little video with y'all. Uh, basically we took this Camry in on a trade. Uh, the customer had misplaced the key, so um you know our used car department took it in they gave them 500 bucks for the car basically looking to scrap it um uh, our manager came up with the idea hey let's see if we can get it running we try to get uh some replacement ecms from several sources online um couldn't really get any of them to work uh i was on the one of the uh, tech forums um pj had chimed in said hey i think i can fix it so we started chatting about two weeks ago and we decided to send him the original uh, ECU out of the vehicle and uh, have him unlock it to see if we can get this get this vehicle running. So we'll see what we can do with it. We got the ECU back from him today. Uh, got it installed in the vehicle. Um, he's gone through and unlocked it. We've got some keys. We'll we'll go ahead and register to it. I've only got two keys so my hope is that I'll get it running and then just force it into the um, auto registration closure uh, since we don't have the three keys to automatically do that um, but we got the two keys programmed give it a go looks like it fires up thanks again PJ